get that thumbnail. Hi guys, I've had my Kindle for six months now, which is absolutely crazy. And I feel like six months is probably the best time to sort of give you an update, give you my recommendations on it, just tell you all about it. So that is what this video is gonna be today. I'm gonna tell you all about the Kindle, the pros and cons, what I've enjoyed about it, why I hate about it, and hopefully this helps you if you're considering buying one. I feel like there's a lot of pressure out there to stick to one format when you're reading. So if you was to buy a Kindle, people feel the pressure to only read on the Kindle. Or if you don't have a Kindle, people feel pressure to only read paperbacks or hardbacks. But I personally thoroughly really enjoy reading between the two, even if it's the same book. If a book is on Kindle Unlimited, I'll read at night time on my Kindle, and in the daytime I'll read the physical copy. Or I'll read one book on my Kindle, and then the next book in paperback. I just love the choice to switch between the two. But before we get into the pros and cons, I'm going to give you a little bit of background information on the specific Kindle that I have. We're just going to get the boring information out of the way. So the Kindle that I have is the Kindle Paperwhite Signature Edition, which has the 6.5 inch screen. It is the slightly bigger one. I did want the smaller one, but I feel like I would read so much better on a bigger screen, but not too big that it's like an iPad, if that makes sense. So I went for the bigger option and I thoroughly enjoy it. I'm glad that I went for this one. I do see people reading on their smaller Kindles and I'm like, I couldn't. It's like a phone and I don't really enjoy reading on my phone that much. A lot of my family members have the smaller Kindle and I just think I just prefer mine. But again, it is subject to opinion. I think it fully depends on what you prefer as a reader. And I did pay 600... What? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. What the hell? 600 pound? I bought my Kindle from John Lewis, which is a UK department store. I don't know if they have it anywhere else. And it just has basically everything in it. And I ordered it online for next day delivery. I was going to get it on Amazon, but at the time that I ordered it in January this year, there was like a Kindle shortage. For some reason, you just couldn't get a Kindle anywhere. And if it was, it was the different one. Whereas I specifically, as I said, wanted this one. So I paid £200, including express delivery, which was the next day. So I paid like £10 alone just on delivery. But obviously, as it's like an electronic expensive device, I don't mind paying a little bit more for express delivery because I'm like I need it in my hands immediately not only because I've wanted it but also because I just didn't want to risk it getting lost in transit or anything I was like no I'm paying extra I need it tomorrow <laughs> It is a lot of money for a Kindle. I know quite a few people that have got the cheaper, smaller option, which works just fine. But as I said before, it all just depends on the reader. And obviously I did want the big screen. So I opted for the more expensive one. But again, glad I did. And I've definitely got my money's worth out of it. You can choose to have Kindle Unlimited, which is 9 99 a month. And I personally do use Kindle Unlimited. So I feel like as someone that does get their money's worth out of that, it is worth me paying for it. Whereas other people that I know don't bother paying for Kindle Unlimited because they just don't read the specific books that are on there. Whereas I read quite a few book top books, quite a few popular books, and Kindle Unlimited basically is the popular books at the moment. I feel like if Kindle Unlimited is worth it to you, then 100% get it. If you're going to read the books that are on Kindle Unlimited, then 9 99 a month is 100% worth it. And people have asked me if it's worth it, and I always explain to it to them like this. So, if you go into the bookstore, for example Barnes & Noble, for example Waterstones, and you buy one book for, in the UK, say £10, say it's like 9 99 that's £10. That's the exact amount of Kindle Unlimited. So if you bought the physical copy of that book, that's only one book that you get for that. Whereas if you get Kindle Unlimited for £10 a month, you get an array of books for the same price as you would have just got one physical. Obviously, as I said, I do like switching between physicals and Kindle, so it is an expensive hobby to have, but I feel like the money and the amount of books that you get with the Kindle is just amazing, and the £10 a month is so worth it. A lot of people find books that they probably wouldn't even bother picking up just through Kindle Unlimited, because if you don't like it, you can just stop reading it. It's not that deep. It's a book. And obviously because it's on Kindle and you've paid for it already, it doesn't matter if you don't finish it because there's so many other books out there that are definitely for you. My Kindle specifically does have extra features as well that makes it really cool so on some of the older kindles you can adjust the brightness but you can't adjust the warmth and obviously when i'm reading late at night i do prefer to have like a warmer screen so it's less hard on my eyes and my kindle specifically does do that which is really cool there are also other cool features like the dictionary feature where you can search for any words that you don't understand or any phrases that you won't understand and there's also an option to highlight some things so if you are one to like annotating your books and tabbing them and stuff you can still do this on a kindle i know a lot of people that want to switch to kindle but love writing in their books and they're like but I like annotating I can't annotate on a kindle but I'm like yes you can obviously it's not the same it's not the same as sitting and writing in your books 100% however there is still an option to save your favorite quotes and stuff and if anything it's easier because it's all compact into one so now I'm going to go on to some more pros and cons. I'm going to read the pros first and then the cons. Just speak you through some of my favourite things about having a Kindle. I have sort of touched on them briefly, but I'm going to go into some more specific things now. 
Obviously, this one's probably the most obvious answer out of every single one, and you're going to hear this in every single Kindle video, but that is the convenience of it. It is so small, so compact. Look at the width of that. That can slide into any bag, it can slide into any pocket, it's good for travel, and you can just literally have hundreds of books on here with so much storage. Mine's got 32 gigabytes of storage. You can have so many books on here and just carry them all around at once instead of lugging 10 paperbacks with you on holiday. My second pro is definitely how much cheaper the books are. I really want to read the Addicted Calloway series. It is probably one of the most viral series I've ever seen in my entire life. The books are so expensive to find in the UK. I added them all to my Waterstones basket and it was over £130 just for all of the books. But on Kindle they're like half price. So for example a book that would have been probably £12.99 is £4.99 on the Kindle. Obviously it is nice to have the paperbacks and it is nice to have them on your bookshelf. But if you do just want to read them and not collect them it is nice to have them on here because they're so much cheaper. This next one is probably my all-time favourite, favourite thing about the Kindle altogether. You could give me a list of pros, a list of cons, and this will be the one thing that I'm going to tell you to buy a Kindle for. So, for example, if I'm sat in bed and I'm reading, by probably 10 o'clock I'm ready to go to sleep because I'm really, really tired, but I want to carry on reading, but I just don't want to sit up anymore because my neck hurts, I've been looking down at my book too long, and it's just not a nice experience. So... Then I will switch to my Kindle and I can lay down with it. Honestly, it is my all-time favourite thing in the world. You're just laying in bed, you can just sit here as if you're on a phone, lay down and just tap, tap, tap away at your screen and it is just the most comfortable thing. And I just feel like I read so much more because of this. I feel like maybe there would have been a time at night where I stopped reading because again, my neck hurts or I get too tired or I just wanna simply lay down. But if I have a Kindle, I can read right up until the point where I go to sleep because there's nothing restricting me. I can literally just tap away while my eyes are just like this. <laughs> while my eyes are slowly closing, I can still be tapping away on this Kindle. And that is probably my favorite thing about it, just how easy it is to use. And obviously following on for that point, you could literally read anywhere you want. So obviously I can read in my room right now. It is quite light in here at the moment, but I can also read in the pitch black. There are definitely times where Riley's laying next to me and he's like, I want to go to sleep. And if I'm reading a physical book, I obviously have to leave some sort of light on to see it, whether that's my phone flashlight, which is incredibly annoying, whether it's a clip on reading light, whether it's a lamp, whether it's fairy lights or whatever. There's normally some sort of light source in the room. So obviously reading on a Kindle, it's a screen, so you don't need any sort of light. And obviously there is that brightness adjustment. So you can just turn the brightness down and whoever's sleeping next to you can just have the best sleep in the world because they don't have to get disturbed by your light sources in your room. And also they don't have to hear you flicking the pages. Not not that that's a loud noise but just tapping the screen is so much easier and speaking of pages it is so much better for the environment we are paper free obviously i love reading and i love reading physical copies of books there is nothing better than holding a physical copy of a book but it is sadly really bad for the environment i am one to not litter i'm one to do the best for my environment if i can however reading is kind of an unhealthy hobby for the environment isn't it Obviously one of the annoying things about a Kindle rather than a physical book is that you have to charge it. However, this Kindle specifically, I'm not sure about other ones, but I do know that the Kindle battery lasts such a long time. I can charge this up and even if I'm using it constantly for 10 weeks straight, I won't need to charge it. This Kindle specifically is advertised to last about 10 weeks of battery. However, I will say that depending on how much I use it, I do tend to have to charge it after maybe five weeks, but five weeks is just exceptional that is just an incredible amount of time people tend to steer away from kindles because they're like i can't be bothered to wait for it to charge i'd rather just have a physical book but honestly you will barely have to charge this another thing with late night reading as well is that it has anti-blue light screen so again it's less hard on the eyes with the warm light and even without the warm light the paper like texture on the front of the screen is anti-blue light so it won't affect your eyesight it won't keep you awake at night because i know for a fact that sometimes when i'm reading on my phone or if i'm just on my phone scrolling through tiktok at 1am in the morning i'll then go to sleep feeling really tired but i physically just can't sleep whereas kindles don't have that so you could literally read up until like 4am and just fall straight asleep after. So the last pro I've got of this video is another thing that I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy about a Kindle. So obviously I do a lot of public reading. I go to Starbucks and read. I read on the train at uni. I read throughout the day at uni when I'm waiting for lectures to start and stuff. And I always have a book with me. Even if I'm just popping to the petrol station to fill up my car, I'll take a book with me because you never know when you're gonna get stranded and you're gonna need a book. So obviously a Kindle, as I said, it is convenient. You can take so many books with you at once. But another thing that I really, really like about it is the fact that you can read as many smutty and inappropriate books as possible and no one will know what you're reading. You could be reading the filthiest, most 
disgusting smutty scene between two people and they won't know the public will not know i know for a fact that there's a lot of I'm gonna say ugly books. There's a lot of books with men on the cover, and as you guys probably know by now, I'm not a fan of men on the covers of books. I do prefer discreet covers, but obviously with certain books you can't get discreet covers, so sometimes when you read a paperback it has to have a topless man on the front, which obviously is not good. But if you're reading on the Kindle, no one's gonna know. No one is gonna know. So you can literally read whatever you want. You could be reading your Harry Styles fan fiction, and no one's gonna know. You could be reading your fairy books, no one's gonna know. Not even just smutty books in general, just anything you want. You might want to read a book about the history of the world, but be embarrassed about that. Not that you should be, but you might. And if you read it on Kindle, you don't need to be embarrassed by that. You shouldn't be embarrassed about what you read anyway. No one should ever feel embarrassed about what they want to read. If you want to read that and if that interests you, then definitely go and do that. But I just, I do understand not wanting to do certain things in public, not want to read certain things in public and stuff. So a Kindle is definitely a really good way to avoid that situation because no one can know. All you're looking at is the back of it. I was going to go on to the cons, but I just want to say as well, I've got a clear case on my Kindle with stickers in it. I've got a Harry Styles sticker, a sticker that said read more books, some little books down here, more books. A girl holding a book and books are better than people. I am planning very, very, very soon to redecorate my Kindle and I'll probably do that over on TikTok. So if you do want to see that, definitely stay tuned. I'll put my TikTok on screen and a link in the description. So this isn't what my Kindle is going to look like for the foreseeable future, but this is what it looks like right now. I'm now going to go on to the cons, but I will say I don't have as many. Because I love my Kindle so much, there's obviously a few little things that people don't agree with, but I personally really enjoy it. I don't find any cons, but I feel like some people that don't prefer reading on a Kindle will find some cons if that makes sense. So this is so stupid, but I kind of, I do get it. And that is not having the physical book smell, which arguably I don't think is a con because it's not specifically about the Kindle. It's just what you prefer as a reader. As I said, it is definitely subject to opinion, but there is nothing better than opening a new paperback book and smelling it. Because even when I opened my books for my birthday, all I could smell was books in the room. And I was like, this is a dream. This is so good. I still do get that because I do switch between the two, but I think this point definitely stands with people that only read on the Kindle. Whereas obviously I do switch between the two. So I don't really encounter that very much. This next con is a fair point, And that is Kindles only last between five and eight years whereas books are timeless which yes I can understand I can understand that a book can literally be reread from front to back at any time you want however I think five to eight years for an electronic device is still very very good it's longer than a phone would last and you don't care about buying a phone every two years do you I'm gonna call you out I'm actually gonna call you out exactly so I don't think that five to eight years on a Kindle is really, really bad, especially if you're reading on it nearly every day. And obviously there are cheaper options. Yes, I paid 200 pound for mine, but you can get Kindles for like 60 to 80 pound. That every eight years is practically nothing. If anything, it works out cheaper to get a Kindle and just only read on that. This next con is definitely something that I've encountered over the last, well, six months since I've had my Kindle. I will read an absolute banger, an absolute five star read on my Kindle. It will be my favorite book in the world, but then I will want to go and buy the physical copy of it. It's not a good trait. It's not a good habit. For example, I read Happy Place on my Kindle recently and I have all of the Emily Henry books on my bookshelf. When it comes out in paperback, I'm gonna go and buy the copy. I didn't even really care about the book that much. To be honest, I didn't really thoroughly enjoy Happy Place. If you watch my little what I read on vacation vlog, you will know my actual thoughts and opinions on the book. But simply because I've got all the rest of them on my bookshelf, I'm definitely gonna go out and buy the physical copy. I'm not proud of it. I'm not proud, but sometimes it has to happen. But obviously, yes, you buy a Kindle to save money, but sometimes you find yourself buying the books as well. This next one is that it isn't really worth it for casual readers, which I completely agree with. If you are a reader that only reads probably maybe even one book a month or maybe one book a year, then obviously a 200 pound or even a 60 pound Kindle probably isn't worth it to you. Whereas to me, I'm reading every single day. I have not had a day without reading pretty much for the last two, years now. Obviously me having a Kindle is worth it because as I said I do switch between the two and I do love reading on my Kindle whereas if you were to read one book a month or you are a more casual reader maybe this wouldn't be worth it which I can fully understand but as I said in the beginning it is subject to opinion if you don't think that this is worth it to you if you don't think the £10 Kindle Unlimited subscription a month is worth it to you then definitely don't get it you don't have to but this is for those of you that are considering buying one because you do think you're going to use it. Another thing is that it is very damageable despite being waterproof. If you guys don't know, you can actually submerge a Kindle in a certain amount of depth of water, I'll put it on the screen, for up to an hour, I think, and you can submerge it and it still be fine. 
I've never tried this, I don't think I ever will, but for example, if you're on a boat trip and you're reading and you drop your phone in the sea, it probably will survive, but it's best not to try that out anyway. However, obviously the screens can still get cracked. You could drop it on the floor and it can still get damaged. But then I think that's the same with every single electronic device. That's going to be the same no matter what. It can be a phone, it can be an iPad, it can be headphones. It's not really a con to a Kindle because any single, you could drop a book in the water and it's going to get, if not more damaged than the Kindle will. So this next one isn't even a con. I feel like all of my cons aren't really cons, but obviously one of the best parts about being a reader is going into the bookstore and buying a load of books which i can safely say is probably my favorite activity other than reading i feel like if reading wasn't a hobby just going in the shops and looking at the books is probably just amazing as well but obviously when you get a kindle there will be less bookstore trips there will be less book buying but again it all depends if you just want to read on the kindle or if you just want to read paperback and kindle because as i said before i switch between the two so i still get book shopping trips it is less book shopping trips but if anything that helps my bank account so if anything it is a pro and not a con because the more you read on the kindle the less you're going to buy you will buy the books on the kindle as well as using kindle unlimited but as i said the books are half price on there i think honestly the most expensive form of reading that I've ever encountered is audiobooks. So digital and ebooks are definitely the cheapest way to go and I would highly recommend reading on a Kindle. But this is just one of my favourite things in the entire world. There's definitely some pros and there's definitely some cons but again I think as I said before it is definitely based on someone's opinion. As I said before you don't have to get the expensive one, you can get a cheaper one but even if you do opt for the most expensive one it is so worth it. I find myself reading so much faster on my Kindle, I read so much more on my Kindle and I just think it's a nice experience to just have something so cutesy and so small in your hands. The way you could personalise them to your own taste. I know a lot of people that just have plain black cases and that's fine because if that represents you. I know a lot of people that have cute pop sockets on it. I have recently bought a pop socket but I'm not going to do it until I redecorate my stickers but just the way that you can make them your own I think is really sweet as well. But overall I think this is a very very smart and very good investment. It's so worth it. There are definitely some really really good books on the Kindle, especially on Kindle Unlimited. Obviously as I said you don't have to pay the subscription if you don't think you're going to use it and if you don't think it's going to be worth it to you. But personally I really enjoy it as I read more popular books. They have the entire Chestnut Spring series by Elsie Silver on there which is a cowboy romance series which I'm currently two books into. And I have the physical copies and I've been switching between the two and really enjoying it. I also have the entirety of the Twisted series, but again, that is also on Kindle Unlimited, so I've been switching between reading both on Kindle and physical as well. There's also some really cute standalones on there. Let me just have a little look through my Kindle Unlimited library. The Eden series by Devney Perry is on here too, as well as all of Frieda McFadden's books. I love Frieda McFadden. I'm currently reading her book as I'm filming this actually. She just does amazing fast paced gripping thrillers and they are all on Kindle Unlimited. So I'm sort of, instead of buying the paperbacks for them, just slowly working my way through her Kindle collection. I feel like you should definitely just sit and scroll through the Kindle Unlimited options because there are so many on there, so many available ones. And yes, they are the more popular books. But as I said in a previous video, just because they're popular doesn't mean they're bad. Even if you personally steer away from popular books, I just think they're popular for a reason. They're easy reads and you should definitely just check them out. So just before I go, I'm just going to remind you again, I have the Kindle Paperwhite Signature Edition with the 6.8 inch screen. It has 32 gigabytes of storage, which is an exceptional amount. That's like thousands of books because I think even the 8 gigabyte one stores around 6,000 books. So if you want to keep them on there and not delete them, you can store quite a bit on here. If you did enjoy this video then please give it a thumbs up, subscribe down below and turn my little post notifications on so you can get notified every time I post a video. I love you guys lots and I'll see you in my next one. Thanks so much. Love you. Bye.